Eh, bueno, solamente nos quedan dos, dos charlas. La siguiente la va a dar Fabricio Baleano y va a hablar sobre mejorar el performance de Magento 2. Así que un fuerte aplauso para él. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Fabrizio. I'm an Italian freelance developer who lives in Spain. And I'm super honored to be here to, today with you. I want to say thank you to all of you for being here with me and to all the guys of Interactive 4 for having me here. So I would like to introduce myself to you a little bit, but we have zero time for that. So let's dive into the presentation. And I want to start with a quote that I really liked and then kind of triggered me into create this uh, speech. And it goes, accessibility, is, uh, accessibility and web performance are not a feature, uh, they are the baseline. So it's a quote by Robin Randall at CSS Trick, Tricks. It's a very nice website uh, if you're interested in web development. And why I like this quote? Because good performance at least in my experience, it's often uh, neglected. And why is that so? Uh, it seems that good performance is always you know, good enough, and we have to use the budget for our other things, like custom development and other stuff. And that's it until uh, performance becomes a big issue. But obviously, we don't want, to be, we don't want it to become a big issue. And we know that performance better. Uh, obviously, a faster website converts more, but uh, we also know that um, performance has a great impact on uh, ranking, so SEO. And obviously, if we manage our resources in a better way, it means we are wasting less money, so everybody's happy about that. Also, performance is a hard task, so if our website is already fast and we want to get that split second more, or less, <laughs> better, uh, it's going to become uh, harder. The more higher we go, it's going to become way harder. So we have to find the sweet spot between the work we can put into this task and the performance level that we want to achieve. But obviously, uh, at least my goal is to find the, let's say, the easiest and most effective way to do so, because we cannot because we are searching for a sweet spot, we cannot dedicate like you know weeks of time uh, to to get a good performance. So, uh, how do we measure performance? So we have a few tools for that, uh, and I can already hear some questions. But anyway, uh, I will go into detail uh, in a few seconds. So we have GD Metrics, Google Lighthouse, uh, Page Speed Insight, and Wise Low. Among them all, I like to use, or I prefer to use, I use more often GT metrics because it has, uh, inside GT metrics, there are both page speed insight and wise law. So you get uh, an overview on these uh, two um, scoring me mechanisms at the same time. So the question that I was already hearing from you is like, you know, does a score really matter? I mean, you know, not uh, a score doesn't tell you everything. That's quite obvious. But at least it's a way to, in a way, standardize and start taking a look at the performance level. And these tools are also super easy to use. Uh, they are free, so why not start taking a look and you know keep a monitoring on these scores? Most of all, because the two of them that are made by Google are used for SEO ranking. So yes, a, sc a score doesn't tell you everything, but it's, it's important. So I usually uh, divide performance in two different blocks. There are server side and client side. And I want to go really super fast on the server side. And I say so because, uh, at least in my experience, nowadays, uh, a lot of hosting companies or um, Magento partners that do hosting, they do it quite well. So let's take a quick look at, at that. But uh, I, I can say that I don't see a lot of problems there. So first thing, be sure to support HTTP2. Ah, first of all, because I'm going to go a little bit fast, because we have uh, not, a, not a lot of time, here on the slides, you're going to find a lot of links and some documentation, some configuration files. I will publish the slides right after the talk, so you can come back to the slides. You can find them on Twitter if you search for the conference hashtag. 
so you can explore those links and check the, the all the documentations. So uh, be sure to support HTTP2 because there are a huge amount of benefits over uh, HTTP 1.1. Uh, there are some PHP optimizations that we have to uh, take care of. Most of all, some configuration of OP cache, which is a bytecode in memory cache. Uh, I, I, I will also say that most of the things that we will look today are kind of known things, but somehow they get forgotten in the way. And most of the time when I get contacted by customers or whatever, I find out they, are, they were not applied. I, I don't know why. That, that's why I think it's important to have this sort of checklist that we can, you know, keep track of at every once in a while we, we check that everything is okay. So also, if we can, obviously we have to be sure to be on PHP 7.2 because 7.0, it's already out of support. Uh, 7.1, uh, the end of life for 7.1, it's gonna be like in a month or so. So obviously we, we're gonna go with 7.2, but also if we're using, or if we can migrate to Magento 2, oh, no, that's bad. Magento 2.3.3, uh, we can migrate to PHP 7.3 that, you know, out of the box, it's going to give you like around 10% more server side performance boost, uh, uh, you know, for free. So if it's possible to migrate, mm, the, uh, for sure migrate. On the web servers, enable gzip for everything. It means that uh, all the traffic between the servers and the customers, the, the, the browsers is going to be um, compressed. And that's something we want. We don't want to waste bandwidth. If we wanna, ha if you wanna have some uh, configuration files, I'm gonna attach two of them that works uh, really well for me, for both Apache or Nginx. And obviously, let's move to the next block, cache storage. If you can, if your infrastructure allow, us, uh, allow it, uh, use Redis, which is an in-memory key value database. It's super lightweight. It's supported out of the box for, uh, from Magento, so if your infrastructure can, go with Redis. Obviously, duh, enable Magento's cache. Yeah. Sometimes it happens. You, you check a new customer website and, you, and they don't have caches enabled. I don't know. And obviously, also, we need to enable full page cache. We can digress into Varnish, which is a, a reverse HTTP proxy, which gives you like a huge amount of uh, performance boost. But you know, it comes with some uh, compromises. Um, the, the infrastructure is gonna be a slight, slightly more complicated, so you know, but that's something you can check. But then let's move to s the, th the part that I really wanna focus on, which is the client side. And first of all, I want to start with some results. This, you know, again, there are two tests made with GT metrics. And we can see there are, uh, this is a base uh, Magento 2.3 point something installation with sample data. And, you know, it's a kind of optimized server. So server side was already taken care of. But then we see that Page speed uh, score, it's kind of, it's, it's not super bad, but it's not really good either. So we have a 71% and Y is low, which was made by Yahoo, if, if I remember correctly. It's 73%, but the thing that scares me the most, it's right there. Uh, we have two, more than 200 HTTP requests. So it means that we are having more than 200 between JavaScript, CSS, uh, images, and so on, which are, quite normal nowadays, but they are a lot. And with the things that we will check uh, in this presentation, we're gonna go, you know, this is the base Magento installation, but it's a good sample anyway. We could, we could go from 71 to 98, 73 to 90 something, and most importantly, reduce the HTTP requests from 200 to something like you know, 19, 20, 30, whatever, but it's a completely different number anyway. So how do we go there? The thing is, uh, another thing that I want to point out is, if you are a developer, obviously study the, the techniques that we need to use, but again, let's don't reinvent the wheel. So there are quite some good commercial toolkit for that, for doing what we're about to see. So I published a blog post on my on my blog and if you want to check 
the modules that I'm about to use in the next slides. You can check them there. I also have some discounts for them if you are interested. I'm not an affiliate or, or anything, so I just think they are really good tools for do this stuff in an easy way and that I found out that they work really well so they, they don't cause problems or whatever. So first thing, we're gonna go with merge and minify. It's again, super uh, easy, everybody knows that, but most of the times it's not really well configured. Magento 2 supports that, but there are quite some problems about that. There is a super nice article by Inchu so that you can read about it. And also if we are using some external module to do that, we get some more um, features, uh, which like for example, we have the possibility to extract the JavaScript part from inline of the page. So it means within the HTML code of our page and move them in an external file something like that, quite advanced, but, but you know, quite easy to check them if they work and activate them and clean a little bit. The, this is something that's gonna like reduce the HTTP requests, the number of HTTP re requests by a lot. So the same goes, same exact theme goes for CSS. Same thing, let's merge minify, let's be sure to do it. And while we are at it, we can think about minifying HT, the HTML code of our page. This is not something that's gonna give us like a huge boost or something that's like a little bit, but while we are checking about merging and minifying everything, let's, let's do it. And this is some, really something that never caused me like any single problem. So I don't uh, find any reason not uh, to do it. But then we are starting to go into the more it's not really more important thing. They are, to me, they are, all these slides are important in the same way. But this is a little bit more tricky. Like, this is deferring JavaScript. It means we are gonna load the JavaScript and process the JavaScript after the rendering of the page. And that's why. Because, uh, let's see how our browser works. So. It's gonna uh, connect to our website, it's gonna download the HTML pa uh, page, and it's gonna check, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's start uh, to parse the HTML code of the page, and then it's gonna encounter like uh, a JavaScript file or a CSS or whatever, and it's gonna stop the rendering and say, okay, I'm gonna download this uh, JavaScript, and I'm gonna process the JavaScript, and then I'm gonna move on. And if we have like 40 JavaScripts and 40 CSS because we don't have merge and minify and whatever, it's gonna stop like all this time and it's gonna go, it's gonna do some parallel download but you know, everything is gonna become, uh, it's gonna feel at least, it's gonna feel slower because of that. So the action of deferring JavaScript is gonna go, it's gonna mean that we are gonna move the JavaScript's uh, declaration or the links from the um, higher part of the HTML code to the lower part, to near the end of the body so uh, the browser is gonna render the whole page and then it's gonna download and process everything. But the thing is, uh, you can tell me, yeah, uh, but we need the JavaScript to run to get the full functionality of the page because, you know, a lot of things happen and they are done in JavaScript. But the thing is, at least how our, our brain works, uh, so when something changes in front of our eyes, we have some time that we need to you know, read the page and understand what we need to do. So we have at least half a second or maybe a second to download the resources. So we can, you know, take advantage of that time to, to download everything where, while the page is already rendered and the user is already, you know, understanding what's, what, what he wants to do. And we have a few modules for that. One was made by me, but <laughs> that's not a uh, kind of advertising. It's an open source model. It's quite simple. Again, my suggestion is to go with a commercial solution that are very much more um, complete. But I can say that Magento 2.3.2 already has this feature bundled in. So you can check it out if you are already have this version of Magento. So when we're talking about the fairing, we said JavaScript, uh, let's go with CSS. We may, we may think we wanna defer CSSs too, 
and that's something we don't want to do. And we don't want to do it because we need our browser to render the page already styled. Otherwise, what's going to happen is we're going to render a page which you know, doesn't have any, let's say, colors or layouts. And then when the browser is going to download the CSS, it's going to flash and re-render everything. And that's called, uh, uh, it has a name. And when something has a name, uh, it, it means it's its own thing, you know. So we have to be aware of that. It means it's called flash of unstyled content. And that's something that we don't want. So for CSSs, we don't want to defer it. But there's something we can do here. So like, for example, if we have CSSs for print, like if we want to print our page, we can provide some uh, CSS just for that. Obviously, we don't need those uh, uh, right when we are rendering the page, so we can move those. And some commercial modules allow you to do that. Or, again, um, the newest version of Magento, which is also Magento 2.3.3, give you the possibility to move uh, non-priority CSS. It's called something like that. Like, for example, Google Fonts uh, or you know, not extremely important uh, CSS is to the bottom page, or bottom of the page, so uh, you can check it out. And then, when we're taking care of JavaScript and CSS, is the, the other thing that it's super important in our website, in our stores, uh, it's images. Uh, websites now are full of images. Obviously, we need images all over the place, but if we can, if, if those images are not um, optimized and the loading of those images is not optimized, what is going to happen is that, again, while we are rendering the page, the browser is going to stop like one million times to download all the images and understand how big they are, where, they, where the browser has to put uh, the images, so it's going to become slower. So uh, if we can, Something that we should uh, do is lazy loading images. It means that we're going to load only the images that are visible in the viewport that's being seen uh, in, at that moment by our viewer. So it means also that we are not going to download. I was not prepared for to use my, my laptop for, for the presentation. Um, it, it means also that we are not going to download the other images that maybe are never going to be shown to the user, because maybe he will not uh, uh, scroll down, maybe. It's, so we will have a slightly faster rendering, but also maybe we will have uh, like half of the traffic. I don't know. We, we, we will use, again, better our resources. And again, the rendering is going to be faster. So why not? We have a few possibilities here. I want to point out something super important. Google Chrome 70, uh, 76 already, have, uh, already has uh, native support for lazy loading, so directly within the HTML code. But obviously, until every browser supports it, we have to go with JavaScript solutions. So I'm going to link you with a Floss module. But again, those commercial toolkits are going to give you or uh, for example, if you use some commercial theme, like uh, Ultimo, Magen uh, Argento, those kind of themes, most of them already have this feature bundled in, so um, you can check it out. But also another super important thing, if we are serving our images in the right way, but the images are like two megabytes big, that's, that's not going to work, right? But, but here comes a little bit of a tricky thing, because images are usually user-generated, and it's hard to keep control of what the user is doing. Like, if uh, somebody uses the backend to upload super big images, uh, we cannot do anything about that. But what happens is that Google, when it's going to index our website, is going to see, like, Whoa, uh, they're not optimized, so we need to do that. And we have a few modules that can scan all our website and optimize the images for us. So definitely check, them, uh, check these modules out. And this is the last slide, last but not last, um, a CDN. It seems like, I don't know, sometimes developers don't really like CDNs, but nowadays things are changing. Obviously, it's going to offload traffic from our website. But then, super important, we're going to have cookie-free domains. Because every time that we are downloading an image, an image and it's on the same domain of the stores, we are transferring all the cookies 
in and out, and it's just wasted bandwidth. So if we use another domain, yeah, we have another domain resolution, but we're going to spare the cookie that we don't need. And also, we uh, the browser can handle parallel downloads much better. Also, there are some uh, really interesting services uh, if within, um, provided by CDNs that are, for example, auto image compression and conversion. They can serve WebP image, for example, uh, automatically to the browser. So this is something that you can check it. And it's also going to give you like a really nice boost. And then I'm going to leave you with, uh, because obviously the time is what it is, uh, more food for thought. Like uh, expire headers, super important to manage cache in a uh, browser cache in a good way. DNS prefetch, that's gonna help us like pre-connecting to to other domains that we need. Um, prior consent GDPR, it's something that if you explore it in a technical way can help performance because you're not processing a lot of scripts before the consent. And tracking pixels, they are a bad thing. The, a lot of uh, tracking pixels are not well uh, served, and I'm in a constant fight with that. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what it is. So again, thank you very much. I'm going to publish the slide. If you have questions, you can reach me everywhere. So really, no problem. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>